Hi, Sony ARX100 cameras shook the market since they were introduced. This was the first uh, camera with so-called 1-inch type sensor and a significant step forward in image quality for compact cameras. This is the fourth iteration, RX100 Mark IV. This camera is made for two types of users. First, those who want more than average image quality in smallest form factor possible using mostly automatic shooting modes. And second, advanced users in need for a small second camera to complement big DSLR system. This video will be a bit longer than most of my reviews, but the RX100 Mark IV is so full-packed with features that I don't see any other way of doing it without omitting important stuff. That's why I will give you a short conclusion at the beginning and then elaborate. If you want the smallest possible camera with the highest possible image quality, uh, if you really need advanced video features of this camera, or you plan to use it mostly in automatic shooting modes, then buy it. Bye bye bye. There, there is nothing else quite like it. But if you plan using manual exposure modes or often change settings built in this camera, I think you should consider twice before buying it. Why? I will get to that. Here's the list of differences compared to previous Mark III model. Most of them I will discuss in more details later in this review. Although sensor still has same 20 megapixels, it is completely new design which enables some cool features. Now it is called Exmor RS. It uses stack design with layers glued together and processing circuitry directly behind the sensor, which allows much faster data readout. That's why Mark IV has 16 frames per second burst, 4K video, high speed video up to 1000 frames per second, and electronic shutter up to 1 32,000th of a second. Also, due to electronic shutter, camera is dead silent and great for taking images without anyone noticing. Other new features include better ISO control, dual photo and video recording, and new video profiles which go way into professional territory, especially S-Log2 with very flat tone curve ideal for advanced video editing and post-processing. Last but also very important, electronic viewfinder is upgraded and has much bigger dot count. First of all, let's talk about image quality, this is most important in any camera. I was kind of expecting big differences due to new Exmor RS sensor, but there are none. New sensor is here mainly for video recording and improved speed. This is not a bad thing, though, as the Mark III model was already very good. As always, I was able to get most from shooting raw format and post-processing images on PC, but even JPEG quality will for most amateur users look like they were using DSLR with a bigger sensor. All the fine details are in the image and there is no trace of noise reduction. At default settings, colors are realistic, maybe even a bit too dull, but that can be fine-tuned in camera by selecting different picture profiles. High ISO is usable at ISO 1600 and even 3200 in most cases. ISO 6400 is a bit too much, but that would depend on available light. This was a very dark scene and noise was strong. But in this case, ISO 6400 looks way way better. Altogether, RX100 Mark IV has definitely best high ISO out of all compact cameras ever made. Great job, Sony. A few words about the lens. It has 3x optical zoom, covers equivalent of 24 to 70 mm, and has quite big aperture, f1.8 to 2.8. That's good for low light use or separating subject from background. I guess many users would want more optical zoom like Mark I and Mark II had, but then aperture would be smaller. Between aperture and zoom range, large aperture is, always, is almost always more useful. There is a built-in free-stop ND filter in the lens, mostly important for shooting videos in strong light. Lens quality is very high, sharp and contrasty. There is a built-in lens profile for correcting distortions and chromatic aberrations, which is applied even for raw images, so you don't have to worry about it. Video recording got major upgrade in Mark IV. It allows recording videos in 4K resolution at 25 frames per second and 100 megabits. If you don't need that kind of resolution, even classic HD video is above competition with 100 frames per second, what is great for fast moving subjects. Video quality is pretty much perfect, especially 4K from which you can grab 8 megapixel still frames, which look more detailed than photographs from many compact cameras on the market. If you want to see how 4K looks in real life, I did a special video made from scenes in my city. Link is below the video. Autofocus in video works rather good, at least during the day. 
In nighttime conditions you might want to switch to manual. One of the most interesting new features is slow motion video which allows recording up to maximum of 1000 frames per second. All the videos in high frame rate mode are taken at a bit lower resolution and then upsampled to full HD. If you want to see more I did a special video made only from various slow motion scenes. Link is below this video. These are the options. Final slow motion factor is determined by sensor frame rate and frame rate at which the video is recorded to memory card. You can choose between 25 and 50 for recording and 250, 500 and 1000 frames per second for capturing. Quality and shooting time priority lets you choose between 2 or 4 seconds video. Finally, camera lets you choose whether button press will mark beginning or the end of video recording. Essential option in case when you don't know when something is going to happen, for example a butterfly starts flying. Any frame rate or video length setting will affect the available resolution. These are all the combinations. You can clearly see only 250 frames per second and 2 second video duration will give you close to full HD resolution. Build quality is good. Mark IV is made from combination of plastic and metal front plate. That should be great, but this front material is very slippery and there is no grip whatsoever. There is a rubberized fan rest at the back, but this is still a very awkward camera to hold. Back controls are way too small, it is hard to use them as is, and in winter with gloves practically impossible. Multi-way controller is a bit too sensitive, it is easy to press it while trying only to rotate it. I know this is a small camera and there is no place for bigger controls, but Canon did it with G7X, why couldn't Sony? Tripod mount is too close to battery and memory card compartment, it is impossible to exchange them with, uh, when on tripod. Handling of this camera sucks. Really, it sucks. You see, menu interface and buttons layout is the same like on first model 4 years ago, but Sony kept adding features with each new generation. There are 5 customizable buttons and quick menu with 10 slots to assign, but this still might not be enough for many users. Let me explain that in real life situation I had. When I got the camera for review, I went through all the menu options, assigned external buttons with features I thought I would use and went out shooting. It was night and I was recording video but auto focus had some issues, so I wanted to switch to manual focus. Then I realized I haven't assigned focus mode to quick menu, so I went to main menu and reassigned it. Ok, manual focus is now active, but why is manual focus magnification not working? Let's go back to the menu and reassign manual focus magnification to custom button. Great, now I finally adjusted manual focus, but the image was too dark. Let's crank up ISO. But once I activated manual focus, it took over the front dial which was supposed to set ISO. So I'm back in the menu and reassigned ISO to quick menu instead of ND filter. I don't need it during night. Seconds later, I realized ND filter is still active from that day's afternoon photo session in sunlight. And I just removed quick menu control of the bloody thing and had to search for it in, in main menu. You see now what is the main problem with this camera. It is way too complicated and over featured for such a small device with just several buttons. Yes, it is probably possible to customize it just right after 2 or 3 weeks of use. But still I feel this camera is way too over featured for such a small body. This is camera mainly made for geeks, not photographers. LCD unit remained the same, 3 inches diagonal and 1.2 million dots. It is tiltable 45 degrees down and 180 upward for a selfie. There is no touch control what is bad for a camera this small. Touch interface and touch shutter would make it faster to use. Just like Canon G7X. LCD viewing quality is great. Very sharp with perfect viewing angles. It has a special sunny weather setting which boosts brightness and makes it visible in sunlight. Sadly, screen is very prone to fingerprints and gets smudged very fast. Electronic viewfinder got upgraded and now has 2.36 million dots. Viewing quality is pretty much perfect. Even better, Sony fixed the bug from previous model which made it turn off each time you close the electronic viewfinder. Now you can enable or disable that feature in any. Small pop-up flash is built in. It is possible to tilt it upward and get rudimentary bounce. If used in modern low ceiling apartments it can give quite good dispersed light. Battery is a lithium unit strong enough for around 250 shots on single charge. It is recharged inside camera using AC adapter and micro USB cable. There is no external charger what is a shame for an advanced camera such as this and even more weird at this price point. 
RX100 Mark IV supports both SD and memory stick in the same slot. Virtually any card will work in this camera, but there's a catch. In order to use 4K video and slow motion video modes, you need to have a card that is at least 64GB in size and minimum ultra high speed free. With slower or smaller capacity card, 4K and slow motion video will be disabled. Keep that in mind. Two connectors are on the right side. Micro USB and Micro HDMI. There is no input for external microphone. You must rely on the built-in or use external audio recorder and sync audio on PC. Ok, let's round this review up. This is a great camera, there is no doubt about it. Image quality is first class, 4K and slow motion videos are outstanding. LCD is great, electronic viewfinder is great, lens is great, it is so full packed with advanced options, I can guarantee you there is no camera like it. But still, I won't buy it. First of all, right now it is too expensive. The price will come down in time, but still there is the problem of features overkill. Camera must feel like the extension of my hand, it must not get in the way of creative photo process. RX100 Mark IV is the exact opposite. I don't remember when was the last time I was so preoccupied just to set up the damn thing. It's all about geeky stuff. There is way too much features for something this small. My subjective opinion is that Canon made many times more usable camera with G7X, which is direct competitor to RX100 series. Of course, you might not share my critical opinion, but be sure before buying it that this is really the camera you want. You can get identical sensor and identical performance and features in RX10 Mark II and this is the camera to recommend. Think about all the good about RX100 and put it in bigger body with proper grip to hold, more controls and even better lens with more optical zoom and stronger battery. This is the Sony camera to have, but more about it in separate review. That's all for this review. I hope I gave you good valuable information. If you have uh, some questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. If you want to support my work, uh, buy stuff on Amazon using my affiliate links below this video. Uh, I will get a small percentage from every purchase, but you will not pay more than you would otherwise. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for further updates and thanks for watching.